Hello everyone, welcome back. So, we are in the second lecture of this module. So, week 8. Now, in the previous lecture, we derived the equation of motion uh, of m dub system and we considered 2 degrees of freedom system. Uh, obviously, we can easily extend it uh, for any uh, n number of degrees of freedom. Now, if I draw the system first and then uh, look into the equation of motion. So, we have 2 degrees of freedom system. Actually, it was a portal frame, but that we idealize with um, 2 mass spring dashpot system, right. So, that is the system. And then, uh, let us quickly identify the mass. So, this is m 1, m 2, spring stiffness k 1, second one is k 2 and the damper is c 1 and the second damper is given by c 2. So, we have x 1 and x 2 uh, are the two um, degrees of freedom we have in this case. And the governing equation of motion in matrix form m x double dot plus k x is equal to 0. Obviously, this is a undamped free vibration case and uh, uh, the vibration is solely due to the initial conditions which I am not writing for the moment. All of us uh, are fully aware of this uh, initial conditions. Now, we derived some more interesting uh, mathematical expressions from this uh, governing equation. What we derived is uh, k times phi is equal to omega uh, square uh, m times phi. This is an eigenvalue problem and omega square are the eigenvalues and phi is the eigenvector. And when we uh, deal with a physical system, square root of these eigenvalues are natural frequencies. So, uh, if we solve this equation, we will get natural frequency omega 1, omega 2 up to omega n. If we have n degrees of freedom and uh, they are all in uh, increasing order. So, um, n number of natural frequencies we will get and for each natural frequency we will get a uh, mode shape uh, that is the eigenvector. So, if we consider two natural frequencies, so consider two natural frequencies. So, omega r and omega s. So, these are the two natural frequencies we consider. Corresponding mode shapes are phi of r and phi of s. Now, obviously, if we put omega r and omega s independently in this equation, they will satisfy. So, let us do that. So, we have the first equation as k times uh, phi of r because we consider rth mode shape. So, we will have phi of r omega r square m times phi of r. Okay. And again, we can also consider, so um, omega s that is the s th uh, natural frequency. So, phi k times phi of s is equal to omega s square m times phi of s. Right. Now, what we do, we consider the first equation 
and pre-multiply this equation by phi s transpose. So, phi s transpose times k times phi r is equal to what? Omega r square phi s transpose times m times phi r. Okay. So, that is the first expression. Similarly, in case of uh, second equation, we pre multiply by phi r transpose times k times phi s is equal to omega s square phi r transpose m phi s. So, that is the second equation. Now, if we take the first equation and then take the transpose, so from this we come here and take the transpose of both sides. So, what we will get transpose of both sides will give us phi r transpose k times phi s is equal to omega r square then um, we have um, phi r transpose m phi s. Okay. So, let us put some numbers. So, this is our uh, say first equation and this is our second equation. Right. Now, what we can do, uh, if you carefully note the left hand side of this equation, they are exactly same. Now, if we take 1 minus 2, that is subtract the second equation from the first equation. So, what we will get on the left hand side, we will have 0. The reason is, we have left hand side identical in uh, the two equations. So, this is 0 is equal to what? We have omega r square minus omega s square times phi r transpose m phi s. So, effectively if we rewrite this equation, uh, I just take this 0 on the right hand side. So, what we have um, omega r square minus omega s square times phi r transpose m phi s is equal to 0. Okay. Now, what we can notice if we have a case if omega r is equal to omega s, obviously this equation is satisfied, but we are again not looking at this uh, case for the time being. So, we are actually looking at when omega r not equal to omega s. That is the case we are looking at because there are two natural frequencies which are not uh, same. So, we consider two different natural frequencies and then obviously, uh, for that problem, uh, if this equation is satisfied, then what we can conclude is that phi r transpose m phi s is equal to 0. If r not equal to s. And obviously, um, this solution tells us that um, phi trans phi r transpose k times phi s also equal to 0 if r not equal to s. How do you get the second expression? Uh, we again go back to the characteristic equation here. 
we consider this equation. So, what we have there say k times phi of s is equal to omega s square um, m times phi s. Now, both side if we pre multiply by phi r transpose. So, on the left hand side we have phi r transpose k times phi of s is equal to omega s square phi r transpose m phi s. Now, if this quantity is 0, obviously this quantity on the left hand side must be equal to 0 and that is what we get here. And this equation tells that phi r and phi s are orthogonal with respect to mass stiffness. So, the phi vector that we get from this equation which we call mode shape. So, that is the key equation. The phi vector that we get, so that is orthogonal with respect to mass matrix. So, that means phi transpose or we can use the small t that is the notation we have used phi transpose m phi will be 0 for all r not equal to s and obviously, uh, for r equal to s we will have some um, values. So, it will be a diagonal matrix all of diagonal terms for r not equal to s will be 0. Similarly, phi transpose k phi will be again a diagonal matrix all of diagonal term where r not equal to s uh, will be 0. Now, this is a very important relation because at the very beginning when we derived the equation of motion here, the governing equation of motion are coupled right that we have noticed in the previous lecture. Now, uh, today what we have proved now is that uh, there is a orthogonality, but remember that orthogonality is defined in terms of mass and stiffness matrix. Uh, phi transpose phi is not orthogonal, we are not claiming that. So, always remember that phi transpose m phi uh, is uh, orthogonal and phi transpose k phi is also orthogonal. Uh, physically what it means that when we develop the mass and stiffness matrix and if we apply this uh, mathematical operations, what we will get is basically a diagonal matrix all of diagonal term will be 0 and the moment we have only diagonal matrix, then we can sense that this transformation will decouple the system of equations. How that is done that we will do in a minute, but for the time being. Uh, the main conclusions we have from this discussion is that we can uh, diagonalize the coupled matrix using this eigen analysis. Now, for that again we consider the governing equation m x double dot plus k x is equal to 0. So, that is the undamped free vibrations. In fact, uh, we derive the damped free vibration also. So, uh, for that the equation will be m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x is equal to 0. So, that is damped free vibration. Now, let us first consider the first equation. Uh, so, undamped free vibration. Let us see how we can um, decouple this equation and then find out the solution. So, 
what we propose is uh, x is equal to phi times z. So, this is our generalized coordinate. And then this is the mode shape, and we also call it eigenvectors. So, and then we have a new coordinate system, we will see what does it mean new coordinate. system. So, we started with generalized coordinate, then we apply this transformation, we get a new coordinate system and if we do that, obviously, what will be x dot, x dot will be phi z dot and x double dot will be phi z double dot. So, if you put that expression here, so mass times x double dot will be phi z double dot plus k times in place of x, we can write phi of z is equal to 0. And then uh, if we pre multiply this equation by phi transpose, so what we have phi transpose m phi then z double dot plus phi transpose k phi z is equal to 0. And now, we have already proved that this two matrices, this one and this one, they are diagonal matrix. So, we call it say m d times z double dot plus k d times z is equal to 0. Note that this equation, the new equation in the new coordinate system z is actually decoupled, because m d and k d they are a diagonal matrix. So, we can write down all the equations and not only that. So, if I say have 2 degrees of freedom, so what we will get m t 1 z 1 double dot plus k d 1 z 1 is equal to 0 and then m d 2 z 2 double dot plus k d 2 z 2 is equal to 0. Now, you see there are two independent equation in z coordinate and z is called the modal. So, this new coordinate system what we have we call it modal coordinate system. So, we started with generalized coordinate, now we have modal coordinate and the advantage in the modal coordinate is that they are independent equations. Because they are independent equations, we can solve them independently and then uh, they are effectively you see the first equation, this is a equation of a single degree of freedom system and the second one is also a sing single degree of freedom system equation the solution of single degree of freedom system we already know and then we can use that solution and find out what is z 1 and z 2 and the moment we find out what is z 1 and z 2 we can go back to this equation and then find out what is x 1 and x 2. Now, for that if we have free vibration obviously, we must know the initial conditions in modal coordinates. So, initial condition I C S in modal coordinate that we can easily find out. So, x of 0 is equal to phi of z 0. So, we can evaluate what is z 0 that is the displacement at time 0 in the modal coordinate and similarly, we can also find out what is the velocity. So, x dot 0 is equal to phi z dot 0 and then we can again find out what is z dot 0 in the modal coordinate 
from the known information of x dot x naught and x dot naught. So, if we define the displacement and velocity at time t equal to 0 in the generalized coordinate, then we can easily find out what is the initial conditions in the modal coordinate and the moment we do that, we can find out the independent equations in the modal coordinate, find out z and we already know what is phi, so we can easily find out what is x. So, that is the solution procedure and this technique is called modal decomposition. Right. So, modal decomposition is very important uh, when we actually solve the equation of motion. So, um, if I write down the modal equation, so this will be m d k times z k double dot plus k d k z k is equal to 0. So, that is the equation in modal coordinates. So, k equal to 1, 2 up to n. So, the example that we solved in the previous class, we had k equal to 1 and 2. So, we have two equations. Now, carefully note if we mass normalize this equation. So, what we have z k double dot plus k d k by m d k. So, this is omega k square z k is equal to 0. So, that is the equation in the modal coordinate. Now, for this equation, what is the solution? For this equation, um, z k of t is equal to z k 0 cos omega k t plus z k dot 0 divided by omega k times sin omega k t. So, that is the solution. Uh, we have already discussed how to get this initial conditions in the modal coordinate. So, we can easily find out that from the known information that is the initial conditions in the generalized coordinate. And once we find out z, so this equation will give us what is z uh, and then once we get the z, we can find out what is x in the generalized coordinate because x equal to phi times z. So, that is the solution of undamped free vibration. Now, if we have say a special uh, case, uh, uh, we just uh, extend it for this damped free vibration, then what will happen? Let us consider again the equation of motion. So, we have m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x is equal to 0. And the transformation we have is x equal to phi z. So, x dot is equal to phi z dot and x double dot is equal to phi z double dot. So, we convert the coupled equation into modal coordinates and for that what we do? we substitute these expressions in the original equation. So, m x double dot will be replaced by phi z double dot plus c x dot will be replaced by phi z dot plus k will be replaced by phi z is equal to 0. And then if we pre multiply by phi transpose, so phi transpose m phi z dot z double dot plus phi transpose c phi z dot plus phi transpose sorry k phi is equal to 0. Now, 
what we can identify. So, this will be a diagonal matrix. So, we call it say m d. Similarly, the third term will have this coefficient as diagonal matrix because of the orthogonality with respect to mass and stiffness. But as of now, we cannot conclude what will be the nature of this and there may be different possibilities. The coefficient of z dot that is phi transpose c phi, it may be diagonal, it may not be diagonal as of now we do not know. But we will see what we can do to make it diagonal because if it is not diagonal, then still this system of equation is not um, uncoupled, this, they are still coupled. So, we will see in a minute what we can do uh, to uncouple that um, coefficient in the second term, but at least what we can conclude is that m d and k d, they are in the modal coordinate, they are diagonal. Now, um, as I uh, just said that uh, there is a possibility that uh, um, phi transpose C phi uh, is not diagonal. It can uh, be the case. Okay. So, in that case again this system is coupled, but um, there are different that is the reason different models of damping. Um, Let us see if we consider a different model, can we make this uh, phi transpose C phi diagonal? So, can we decouple this matrix? And for that C matrix, let us consider C is proportional to mass matrix and also proportional to stiffness matrix. So, this is the model we consider C is equal to alpha times mass matrix. That means, it is proportional to mass and then beta times these are the two scalar constants alpha and beta and then uh, if C is alpha times m um, and then plus beta times k, then let us see what happens. So, C, if I pre multiply by phi transpose, what will happen? On the right hand side, we have alpha, then phi transpose m plus beta phi transpose k. And then in this equation, we post multiply by phi, then what will happen? On the right hand side, we will have phi transpose m phi and then phi transpose k phi. So, we know these two are diagonal matrix. So, we will have ultimately alpha times m d plus beta times k d. Now, if we have this model, C equal to alpha m plus beta k, then obviously phi transpose C phi is diagonal and we can write it C d. Because on the right hand side we have two diagonal matrix multiplied by two scalar constants. So, the resulting matrix will be also diagonal matrix and that is how we get this C d matrix. Then if we transform this equation, so what we have is m d z double dot plus C d z dot plus k d z is equal to 0. Again, this is a free vibration equation and we need the initial conditions that I have already discussed how to get the initial conditions in the model coordinate. So, the kth equation if I write down, so what we have m d k z k double dot plus C d k z k dot plus k d k z k is equal to 0. Now, k ranges from 1 to up to n. Now, this equation if we mass normalize, so what we will have z k double dot plus 
C D K. Now, this C D K is proportional to Z K. So, we have the same model that we had in case of uh, S dub system. So, this will be twice eta k omega I write omega n k omega n is the natural frequency. So, k is the natural frequency then z k dot plus omega n k square z k equal to 0. So, that is basically the equation uncoupled equation in the modal coordinate. Right. And for this equation, we know what is the solution. So, um, the solution for this case is um, Z k of t is equal to exponential minus eta k omega n k t times a k cos omega d k t plus b k times sin omega d k times t. Then again there are two constants a k and b k that we can find out from the initial conditions. It is an easy task. We have already done it for S dub system and effectively this is also a S dub system because this is in the modal coordinate. right? And then once we find out the solution for all k, so what effectively we know is z and that if we multiply by phi, phi is a vector, then effectively what we will get x that is the response of the system. So, that is the solution strategy we have for the damped free vibration case and then uh, we can find out the total solution. So, uh, what we will do now uh, uh, we will close here, but in the next class we will solve some uh, problem using MATLAB and then uh, we will see how we can find out the response. Now, before I close, uh, this model of damping is called Rayleigh's model. So, we have uh, damping modeled as uh, c equal to alpha times m plus beta times k. So, it is proportional to mass and stiffness. And if we have this assumption, again uh, we can um, decouple the damping matrix and uh, once we adopt that, we can easily solve the uh, system of equation which is actually coupled in the original coordinate system. So, with that uh, let us close here. Uh, in the next class, we will solve some example using MATLAB and we will see how we can find out the free vibration response. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.